I think it's becoming increasingly clear that the president will have two options. One, he can resign from office, or two, he can face impeachment. I think having thorough investigations, putting forth an impenetrable case to the American people, doing it in a bipartisan way is the proper way to do this, but we're not there yet. Democrats are clearly torn. You just saw that on this issue of impeachment. Now, deep down, I think they know that their activist nut job base wants Trump impeached. Plus, they just love talking about it. Thinks it's going to help their ratings. But their internal polls are telling them something different, that the country is not that excited about another impeachment drama 20 years after the Clinton proceedings. But whatever path the Democrats choose to go down, one thing is clear. Republican voters sense that this is a winning issue. Take a listen to some of the callers on my radio show this morning. The impeachment talk, I think, is wonderful. It motivated me and my family. I think they said it over 200 times at MSNBC and CNN. And I said, you know, enough is enough. There's my motivation. I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat, but nothing in this world is going to stop me from getting to the polls in November and voting straight Republican down the bill because I'll do anything it takes to protect this president. The personal life of Mr. Trump, we don't care. We see the results of him being in office, and it's amazing. And I'm saying this as a Mexican immigrant woman who registered Republican, and it's not just me. It's many people that I know. Well, I love doing a radio show. You get the pulse of the people every single day, and the mainstream media are totally disconnected. Joining me now with their thoughts, Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service agent, Chris Hahn, radio host, former aide to Senator Chuck Schumer. It's great to see both of you. This impeachment talk is fascinating because it's like it's like a kind of a trigger finger, like you get, you get a happy finger, like you're used to shooting and you're shooting at targets and you got to watch yourself because maybe you're going to fire at something you don't want to fire at. Dan Bongino, I want to start with you. What about this kind of internal tug of war in the Democrat Party? Where does their heart lie on this issue? Well, here's the problem the Democrats are having right now, Laura. Their activist radical base, the people who are motivated to go vote in primaries, the Bernie Sanders types, the Ocasio-Cortez supporters who wear the T-shirts, uh, you know, the, with the We Love Socialism shirts with the big hearts, you know. Those people are motivated to get Trump out of office no matter what. Um, they're not even interested in a high crime or misdemeanor because Trump's crime was winning the election. That's it. That's the issue they have. The more moderate, if there are any be left, even reasonable, rational Demo Democrats up on the Hill, understand that this is a total, complete loser. You have people like Eric Swalwell, who you showed before, the Democrat congressman, who represents a radical district uh, in California. You know, he may be OK saying that. But you go to a Joe Manchin type, if he were to win re-election in this Senate race, you think he's going to vote for impeachment in a Senate trial? Are you kidding me? That's a joke. Give me a break. Chris Hahn, uh, I get why the Democrats are kind of in this seemingly impossible position in a way, because that is where the juice is, right? We're going to get Trump. We're going to do hearings on whether Jared Kushner really should get a security clearance or... I mean, they've been listing all these investigations that they want to they want to do if indeed they take the House in November. But you, you get the sense that the regular folks out there, they're just not that jacked up on on a year or two of hearings. I, I just don't feel it, at least. Well, I don't know. It worked for the Republicans for uh, six years when they controlled the House. That's all they did was hearings. Uh, look. I don't think impeachment's going to be on the table unless you have a large group of Republicans decide that they feel that this president needs to be removed. And I don't think that's going to happen given our current environment. But I do believe that the president should be subject to checks and balances. And I think most of the American people agree with me on that. And I think that's why you're going to see the Democrats at least take the House, if not the House and Senate, come November. And look, impeachment ah, is just one funny. way to do things. It, it, impeachment is just one way to do things, Laura. Uh, you know, I know you and I are both fans of The Princess Bride. So is Dan. He won't admit it. But you know that last scene in The Princess Bride where he's talking to the prince, Wesley's talking to the prince and saying it's not a fight to the death. No, it's a fight to the pain. And that's what's going to happen in the last two years of the Trump presidency. If they try to go and take him out of office, they will guarantee him four more years. And I don't
don't think the Democratic Party wants to do that. I think what they want to do is make yeah. sure that the people who are making things bad in this administration, the cabinet secretaries who are abusing right. their power and okay, traveling well, a different on, the company, matter. Yeah, on, the, yeah. on the government's dime, I get that. that stuff needs to be looked into right. by Congress, and this Congress has been yeah. feckless in doing it, okay, and that's why I the American people that. are voting them out. Yeah, I get that if Democrats have the House, actually things that are happening in the government, I understand that. We're talking about, well, we're going to, we're going to, why, you know, why did he not release his tax returns? Americans already litigated that. It was called the election. That's what I'm getting at. But I also want to get your thoughts on something else. Last <laughs> week, we all heard from the media that Trump was finished, Dan Bongino. Watch. Yeah. After this week, I think it's safe to say it's certainly the end of the beginning. This has got to be the worst week the president has faced since taking office. And what might be Donald Trump's worst week ever as president. This was Donald Trump's worst week as president and no doubt the worst week of his life. Do they really need glasses? That's my question. <laughs> An NBC Wall Street Journal poll finds the president's approval numbers are remarkably stable, barely moving from surveys conducted right before and right after the Manafort and Cohen news. Uh, Dan, they were they were flummoxed over at MSNBC today. Chris Jansen, I used to work with her years ago. She's a nice yeah. person. But she's like, well, what, what do you make of this? The president's numbers aren't moving. I'm screaming at the TV, Dan, during my radio show saying, yeah. because the media are irrelevant. Nobody cares about what you say is the worst week. Bongino. Yeah, you know, Laura, I've been honored to be doing cable news appearances for a long time. Um, I used to do other networks. Um, I don't anymore uh, for obvious reasons. They don't want to report the news. But you know what they do on other networks? They watch what's happening on Fox. So to those other networks now, listen, everybody's laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. They're laughing at you. You know, Laura, this reminds me of an article I read. I forget where it was, but I read it a little while. I think Jonah Goldberg wrote it. And he wrote about how the government's war on smoking worked. Because everybody knew a smoker, and they knew how to talk to them, and they knew how to get them to quit, and it mattered. The media has no idea whatsoever how to talk to people who live in Heartland America. They, they might as well be space oh, aliens they hate from Martians. <laughs> they can't stand them. Well, and they look down we're, on Listen, they, we're laughing at them. You know, and they think they're winning. All right, Chris, got to get Chris in here. Chris, I mean, look, the Democrats I, have I had knew. trouble connecting with those blue-collar workers. Republicans have a challenge with suburban women, clearly. But there does seem to be a disconnect. I mean, whether you're Republican or Democrat on this on this middle America, what they care about versus what the media are all hot and bothered about. Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, uh, uh, look, rarely are political uh, careers destroyed by a bad day. It's the drip, drip, drip of scandal that is going to ruin the Republicans' chances of t holding the Congress in November. Because there's been drip after drip after drip, and the campaign starts the day after Labor Day, and you people bet. are going to start hearing about those drips day in and day out, and there is more to come, more than likely. And that's the problem for the president's party, not necessarily for the president. The Fox News poll last week was very telling. I think it said a lot of things. This poll obviously has been very stable. Okay, but most of this poll right. was taken before. Okay, uh, guys, out of time. But one scandal right, never ruined your career. It's the drip, drip, right. drip, and there's been a lot got of leaking it, forces um, here. Great conversation, guys. Thanks so much. Up next, the death of Senator John McCain, an American hero, being used by the media to bash the president. We discuss it next.